day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. It is not to temptation, but to us from evil. That is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Christian flag and to the Savior for which he stands. One Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty to all who believe. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light into my path, and I will hide it before to my heart that I might not sin against God. Good job. Good job. Good job. Morning, church. Morning. Good, morning. Good being in the house of the Lord this morning. Clerks can't hear me sometimes. I know, but that sounds good, doesn't it? She'll hear you now. You think? Gary couldn't get a whole lot over on this side, so he's coming over to help you. Yeah. Dave, would you ask the blessing, please? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the blessings you give us. We know that one we can have is to give to you and all the blessings you give us, God. Now, please God, bless the church to keep them in the name of the Lord God Jesus. In my prayer, amen. 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 Y'all seen billboards? I don't know about y'all, but I always watch the billboards on the churches to see what the sign says, you know, what's going on. And one up the river here. It said, to prevent sin burn, S I N burn, to apply sun, S O N, screen. I thought that was neat. To prevent sin burn. But you know, Brother Roy. He's been talking a lot here lately about believing, how we believe, what we believe. This morning I want to talk to you, go back into Luke. I'm going to be in Luke chapter 24. Talking about the disciples. But you know, to believe in something, it's hard to have faith in something and to believe in something that you don't understand. You know, I think a lot of the disciples, there's a lot that Christ told them, they heard what he said, but I don't think they always understood him. But you know, sometimes we get out into the world and we try to take God's word with us. As Christians, there's a lot of things that we understand about the faith that we have, the belief that we have, the miracles that we've seen, the things that Christ has done in our life. But if you go out there to a sinner and you try to show them that, they have a hard time believing. They've never had that experience. If you haven't experienced something, it's hard to believe in. If you have not the knowledge of something, it's hard to comprehend. I know a man that can walk the water. Now, I wasn't there, I ain't that old. I wasn't there and seen him walk it. 
through his word, I know he did. Why? Because I believe what God's word says. Through believing in the word of God, we receive his knowledge and his wisdom. But you know, sometimes we still have doubt. Do we not? No matter how hard we try, sometimes in life, we still have doubt. But as we come up on the world today, there's so many out there that don't believe in Christ, don't have that experience of Christ, don't know Christ. Now, Stoney, when me and you was out in the world and having a good time, we know of Christ, right? But did we believe what he could do? And there's a lot of them out there today. They believe in Christ. They believe that they are a Christ. But they don't have the faith to believe that Christ can come into their life and say, what's Christ saved you from? What did he hang on the cross for? Amen. But you know, as I want to get into Scripture, in Luke, there was two disciples a little on the way. They was discussing things like we do today. You know, we're discuss they was discussing. This was the day, the third day that Jesus Christ was, was supposed to have risen. They was discussing. They wasn't sure. They had a doubt. They wasn't sure whether he was coming back or not. This thing's going on. <laughs> Take it with me. <laughs> Someone read verse 20. Luke 24, verse 20, please. Why do, you, why do you think it says here that he was condemned? But also to be convicted, they had to have evidence. All false. But it wasn't true evidence. But we just said it's false. Right. <laughs> you don't works. say it works. It works. <laughs> but you know, he wasn't guilty of anything. They couldn't really truly. They couldn't find any fault in the man when it, when they put him on the cross. He had one reason, one reason to hang on that cross. And that was for us. But you know, it would be hard to understand like the disciples here. Jesus told them ahead of time, he told them that he had to stand before men, that he would have to be crucified, and on the third day, he would rise. He told them that ahead of time. But it was still hard for them to understand what he was saying. Verse 21, please. See, they're starting to get a, having a little bit of doubt here. This come up the third day. They trusted him. Although they didn't understand what he had told them at this time, they didn't truly understand why he had to be crucified, why he was going to raise on the third day, but they trusted him. But still they didn't understand. Here's the third day. They was looking for some kind of showing, for some kind of sign. They was getting a little bit... A little bit of doubt right here. They wasn't sure. There's things out in the world that we're not sure about. There's times in our Christian life that we wonder. They said the Bible says there'll be trials and tribulations brought upon us. Do we always understand them? 
And I'm going to be honest with you, church. There's times that I have prayed and asked God to take care of something. My daughter was sick. I prayed and prayed and prayed. She didn't, each evening I'd come in from work. She wasn't any better. I'm not saying there was a little bit of doubt, but I did begin to wonder. But I took the, the situation into wondering upon myself. What have I done wrong? There's times in life that we don't understand because God's ways and God's thoughts are so much higher than ours. What we think should be in our time is going to be in God's time. But we want everything instant. We want it to happen right now. That's why there's so many fast food restaurants. So Roger can eat quick. <laughs> Verse 22, please. Yea, a certain woman, also our company, made us a sonnage, which were early at the septicus. You didn't think I could pronounce that word, did you, Ma? Well, that's a big word, but septicus. I'm not sure it's septicus. Is that a or a receptacle? It's not a receptacle, that's in the wall. <laughs> <laughs> well, right here they were starting to acknowledge and get a report that he had risen but did they at this point did they still have a little doubt was there a little bit of non-belief sometimes we got to walk out on faith to get to where God wants us to be it's hard to step out on faith when you don't know exactly what's coming, as, as human beings, you that ball, human beings? Thank you. <laughs> we want to know ahead of time what's going on. And starting here in business, like me, we want to know what's coming tomorrow. We want to know where we're going tomorrow, how long we're going to be there, and where we're going to be the next day. And that's, that's part of business. But as disciples, you know, as, they was, as Roger ponders, as they was talking it all over and they were trying to make these decisions in amongst themselves, they was, still wasn't sure. They heard, the, they heard the report. He is risen. They had no proof. They seen no signs yet. They thought on the third day, it automatically they should see. Because he told them the third day he would die. But how many times in life can we look at something and still not see it? saying here, a lot of times in life, Jesus Christ has laid out the path. He showed us where we need to be, where we need to go, and what we need to do. We're looking at it, but we're still not taking it in. We're still not seeing the picture. As I say all the time, I said, I've got the camera, but Christ has got the picture. He's ahead. He knows what's coming tomorrow. He knows what we've done yesterday. Three days from now, he, he knows what we're going to do. We're just here to be a part of his, of his church. He is the leader. He is the head. He knows your thoughts before you think.
Verse 24. They was kind of getting nervous, wasn't they? They saw him not. They was getting a fear. They walked with Christ. They was with him. He told them he would be crucified. Third day he would rise. Third day came. He hadn't risen yet. I mean, he had risen, but he hadn't showed himself to them. They, they thought they had lost their master. They thought they had lost their way. They had a fear. You go out in the woods of the night. Anybody who's in here that ever coon hunt knows what I'm talking about. Battery go dead on your lights, total dark. You got a fear. Which way's my truck? I ain't worried about the coon. If my light goes out, I'm finding the truck. But that, that's what the disciples was. They was they was they was in fear that they lost their master and he wasn't coming back. Verse 25, please. No. They didn't have the knowledge, the wisdom that came from Christ. It's just like, I ain't going to say teach. I'll say taught. Thank you very much. Which I never did hear of a school totter. But that's not the point. <laughs> They're school teachers. But, you know, until. They got to that point in life, they was following Christ. They didn't have the Spirit like we have today, the Holy Spirit. They was following Christ. Well, if you was following somebody and they disappeared, you kind of wonder, well, where am I going? Because I was following you and you only want to know the way. That's what I was saying. Gone. Disappeared. But he told them that. But they still, as far as faith and understanding, it wasn't, I don't think it was as much as they didn't have the faith to believe. They didn't understand it at that time. I think that was what, you know, a lot of people say, well, they didn't have the faith to believe in it. I don't think it was that much of a faith that it was understanding. They were like, I don't want you to die. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, Right. Well, I don't think he understood totally why he had to die. And you know, I think a lot of times, you know, they, they didn't understand why he had to die because he had, at this time, you know, God still had the power. God didn't give Jesus Christ the power of heaven and earth at that time. God still had control. God still had the power. But I don't think they understood, you know, with the miracles and things that Jesus <coughs> does, why he had to die. At that time, they didn't understand that he was dying for, for the sins of the world, for the sins of the people. Well, they didn't understand he was a supreme sacrifice. That he was a sacrifice. Well, they just used to sacrifice an animal and stuff to God. Right. But then it comes down to Jesus. He was a supreme sacrifice for everybody. Well, you know, the animals covered, the blood of the animals covered the sin at that time. Which later on, as we go through, you know, Christ's blood covered the sin. But, I, you know, a lot of people say Christ's blood covers the sin. It don't cover sin. It done away with sin. When Jesus Christ's blood done away with the sin of the people at that time, everything was forgiven at that time. All sins were took away. They weren't covered. All sins were took away. Right. Uh, you know, it's, it's a choice we have to make over there. There's choices we have to make all the time. <laughs> 
lays upon our hearts. I don't always understand it. Like I said, his ways and thoughts are so much higher than ours. I've been in situations that I know that God has put me in that I didn't understand. I've had things come up on me that I haven't understood. But at the end of it, I draw wisdom and knowledge from what God had put me through. As old saying is, you know, you can't always be on the mountain top. You have to come down and go through that valley sometime to receive what God wants you to have. That's like our children, which today we spoil them a little bit, but okay, a whole lot. But you know, sometimes I look back as I raise my children, I, my, my wife, let me rephrase it. My wife raised my children. I was never home. Before I received Christ in my life, I worked seven days a week nonstop. I was giving them everything that I could give them. Except what they needed. Been there, ain't but I thought I was doing a great thing. I was giving them everything in life that I didn't have. But I was just like these disciples. I wasn't understanding the most important thing that my kids needed was me. Mandy came to me one time. She said, Daddy, she said, I know, you know, you've given me everything in life but time with you. She said, something I wanted more than all that you give me. Well, my son come along. <laughs> About six years old, my dad passed away. Then it dawned on me. This is the last chance I got, last child I had. I need to take back and spend a little time. You know, and I was like these disciples. I had everything laid out in front of me, but I still didn't understand what Christ had, the path that he had me on. I do now, but with age comes wisdom and knowledge. I was young. I didn't understand. Just as a Christian, as we're young Christians, we don't understand all the time what God has not laid out for us, the path that he may have us on. Thank you, Lord, I'm awake. <laughs> go pray. Thank you, Lord, for another day and go pray. That, that'd be the first thing that comes to your mind. What are we at, 26? 25. Okay, go back to 25. <laughs> Call them fools. Old fools. Not having the understanding or the faith or the belief, ever how you want to word it. But I think they really didn't understand. Just like the trials and tribulations comes up on us today. Do we always understand them? But we have the answer to them. Sometimes we've got to drop down to our knees to get the answer. To get serious with God. If we get serious with God, he'll get serious with us. But I don't want to say this in a bad way, and I don't mean it towards anyone here, but you can't play church. And there's a lot of them out there in the world today that are trying to play church. They're not committed to church. They're not committed to God. That's why he calls them fools, because they have not the faith or the wisdom or the knowledge or the belief. To be in his house and to be what he wants them to be. I always thought I was doing great things in life. Then I realized Christ was going through me. Without him, I wouldn't have had a lot. That breath of life that he blowed into the nostrils and made man. I'm breathing that air today. That breath is right here today. But I thank God that I went a little farther than that, just that breath. I got that spirit to go with it. Through Jesus Christ. There's only one way. Do I have all the knowledge of God's Word or all the wisdom of God's Word? No, I don't. But I'm growing a little bit each day. My wife says when growth, when growth stops, the case starts. That's a wise woman. Don't sit there and smile. I 
I want you thanking. She's a good woman. I didn't say that. I said she wasn't that wise. I'm sure. <laughs> Pretty much. You know, a, a lot of times we have, I might want to say division in church, but a lot of times we get in our church and our denomination. And I want to be honest with the church, it's not about denomination. No. And I'm not criticized. I know, I know, I understand. But a lot of times throughout that, though, we'll get division yeah. between one another and between our churches. Yeah. And you know, the spirit of life, soul, the breath of life, whatever, it all comes together. It's true that it all comes together to make life. I have a little bit different theory on the soul, but that's just me. But, you know, the spirit or the breath of life goes back to the Father who gave it. It's not about it's about Jesus Christ. It's about what Amanda says, the death, burial, and the resurrection. It's not about what's hanging over the door. That's not going to get you there. I don't care what denomination you are. The denomination is not going to get you there. Amen. Jim, you said something there about waiting, you know, like when we're dead, to be waiting on for, on the judgment day. Right. In my estimation, it would be like be no wait because it'll be instantaneous. If you know nothing, you won't know. It'll be like you died, and the next moment will be you'll be the resurrection. Res day, the, yeah. I mean, it will be the, right. the judgment day. Right. So there won't be a thousand years of waiting. It'll be you won't know. Death. You won't know how you long it'll be. Right. It'll be it'll be instantaneous to, right. to, to the dead. Will not? Right. Okay. Because uh, I, you know, that waiting thing makes people. It kind of gets them. Well, you ain't gonna know you're waiting right. anyway. <laughs> you're dead, you're dead. Yeah, pretty much. Well, the Bible said in a moment, and 
So when they know that, there's what they And they didn't know it's not any night. So it's just going to be a sprinkling of an army down there. Mm -hmm. They lay down in death, and the next thing you know, the Lord will fall down there. Right. They believe what they believe. I believe it's my way. They can believe it theirs. We'll agree to disagree. But a lot of them said, well, and mom's up there looking down upon me. The Bible says there'll be no sorrow and no pain. If your mom or your dad or loved ones or whatever was up there looking down, there's no windows. If they was up there looking down upon us, the things that happens to us in life and the tragedies that we go through, would it not bring sorrow and pain to them? So how are they going to be looking down? They're laying down. All right, they're going to pray. My dad's down there on the hill, right up here. Down there 20 years this September. Well, Labor Day weekend. Down there from the river. He's still there. When I die, I want a prayer with me. Go down the grave, sir. I'm not going to have
some incurable disease that, and they're seeing all this pain that's being inflicted on them. They're, they're happy about it. Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of that stuff just don't make sense once you start reading the Word of Yeah. It ain't going to make sense. The understanding either. from God, you realize, hey, what he's being taught, and that's hard a lot of times to accept with the traditions like they have exactly. brought up with hell for life. It's hard to accept. Yeah. And my thoughts are if everybody goes to heaven when they die, they're not all saved. Yeah, why does God have some So well, when the Lord comes back, he's gonna bring all those people back down here and then, then, then judge them. The right, that's what he says. And yeah. they've been up there enjoying the uh, joys of the Lord. Joys of the Lord, the glorious of heaven, and then they're gonna come back down here no. and cast them in a lake of fire. Ain't that that's 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 well, what really got me to the point was when you get to the Word and it says he's dead and lost up. That's all you need to be dead and lost no. That's the third you need to go. Yeah, I worked with a preacher. He's a black man. Black man. Black man. I was with a black man. Christ, even through his word, he says, ask, and you shall receive wisdom and knowledge. But you have to ask him. And there's a lot of times we, as, as humans, we think we know it all. We don't. And we don't. No. Yeah, it's like, well, I'll find that, man. I got it. It's just like you being a preacher. you got to earn the Lord's respect, and he's got to have Got that bad to say in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can I ask a question? I'm yes. probably the youngest 
I'm hearing, I come in here heavy today. I'm hearing all this about the Baptists. Are the Baptists not Christian? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay, well, the Bible says that there's just one Lord. One faith. And so how, to my understanding, the Baptist is a Protestant. The Protestant. Like you get a new priest every year or every couple of years. And just got me these statements as far as like the money. They said about the money, love and money. I love money a whole lot better than the mark of the beast. I just want to say, I come in here heavy, and I just feel like I'm getting heavier. Oh, well, we're not trying to do that. Please don't. No, we're not. Not that at all. Well, There's nothing wrong with being a Baptist. It's okay. whosoever will. So it's different beliefs that different denominations have. And that, they're, they're good in all denominations. Yeah. I mean, But like I said earlier, it's not about the denomination. It ain't about whether you're an Advent. It ain't about whether you're a Baptist. It ain't about whether you're a Catholic. It's death, burial, and resurrection. It's death, burial, and resurrection. And believing in Jesus Christ. Amen. And the money. I have money too. Not very much. But I have money. And it's not the point of having money is the problem. It's that you love the money more than you do Christ. That you love the things that you have in life, the money that you have. You put before, anything you put before Christ can draw you away, and that's what you love. And that, that's why it says the root of all is love of money is real. Because you love the money, it's more important to you to have the money than have Jesus Christ in your life. That's what the love of money is. Or putting it before Christ, putting it first. And you covet money. Right. So I hope that helps you there. No. What they didn't understand was the suffering he went through. That's what the slave and truly didn't understand it because, as we said earlier, they didn't have the wisdom of the knowledge to understand it. But he had to go through it all to get to accomplish what he needed to accomplish. He had to suffer. The Bible says to suffer with him is to reign with him. He had to suffer. He had to pay the price. When he hung on the cross, he suffered. To take upon the sins of the world, upon his self, so that we could have eternal life. So that we could have life. Not other than eternally, but so we could have life. His accomplishment was made. What he came here, what God sent him here to do, his accomplishment was made to his resurrection. When that stone was rolled back. He accomplished what he came to accomplish. He was alive. Amen. After the third day, he had risen. He is alive. He's not in a tomb somewhere. He's sitting up there on the right hand side of the Father. Today, he's alive. He's one out of here this morning. He knows Christ. He's with us this morning. He's still alive. And we feel his spirit. That's how we know. We can't visually see him. But we feel him through the spirit. He's alive. But see, at this time, the disciples didn't understand what he was going through and why he was going through it. Someone read verse 29, please, or 28. And they drew nigh to the village whither they went, and he made the priest who would have gone over. 
See, he would have going forward. They made it to the village. He was walking with them, although they still didn't know who he was. He would have went farther than that village, just like he does for us today. He'll go a little farther with us if he has to, if he needs to, to bring us back. Straight and narrow path was the message that's going to be about here in a little bit. He'll walk with us. He'll go with us wherever he needs to if we stray. Amen. Well, some you know think he put him in a Get him out on church day. Well, Lord, you stay in there. I'll take you with me unless you die. Sunday morning, Lord, we're going to church. We should have went all week. He should have been with us all week long. There ain't no laying Christ down and picking him back up. I used to say that they get in there and they flip flop like fish in and out of water. One day, I got one of the men that works for me. I ain't going to say who he is. But one week he's saved, next week he's back out in the world. Next week he's saved, two or three weeks later he's back out in the world. I said, buddy, you're going to have to quit flip flopping like a fish in and out of water. I'm going to get with Christ and stay with him. I said, one day he's going to take you back. But you know, the disciples. They couldn't understand why Christ had to suffer because they didn't understand he was suffering, that he had to die for our sins, for their sins, for all the sins. But for them, it was hard to comprehend. But like it is for us, try to comprehend what really heaven is going to look like, what's going to be there. We, naturally, we know Jesus Christ, he's the light. But the street of gold, the walls of death, the pearls, the thing that's up there that he's made for us. You think maybe he loved us? Why he went and made all and went to prepare a place for us? That one day we shall be with him? I'm waiting on that day. But through his suffering, he accomplished what he came to accomplish. Although the disciples they didn't understand it. So read verse 29. But he's, as he broke bread with them, and he asked for the blessing upon him, although I told Roy the night, although he was Christ, he still asked for the blessing. He still asked God to bless whatever he done. He still asked the Father for the blessing. But when he asked the Father for the blessing, that's when he understood when he broke bread and said, that's when he understood that this was He has his, he is by so now they know the master has risen. He's back. Amen. That's what he comes for. But you know, Roger, and I understand he, he went through a lot to get the Father's will done. He really did. When Jesus Christ walked this earth, there was nothing about him. 
It was all about the Father's will. <coughs> each thing that he done, each purpose that he had was for the Father. Remember when he was in the garden of his family there, when he was praying, he said, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. Yes, he did. It wasn't God's will. No, then I will, it will, it shall be done. And he was praying, you know, when his blood became a great drop of blood. I mean, his strength became a great drop of blood. Well, he was doing some praying. He knows what was ahead of him. He knows the punishment that he was going to have to go through. He knows that. But you know, a lot of times in the world today, we know what God has in store for us. We can reach out there and, and, and take what God has for us to do. And it, we can't use that excuse today. That we don't have the knowledge. We don't know. We have the word. Work out your own salvation with God with fear and trembling. Each one of us has a different relationship with God. I can't have your relationship with God, you can't have mine. Each one of us work out our own. And that's what we have to do. My daughter told me one time, she said, and that's the hardest thing I've ever dealt with in my life. And then I'm going to close. She went back into the Lord. She backslid. And I was been after and been after and been after to get back in the Lord's home. She backslid. And she looked right at me and she said, Dad, you, I don't see nothing in you that I want. Ooh. Now, you talking about something hurt. I said, well, honey, if you don't think I'm a good enough Christian, I said, be a better one. I said, be a better Christian than I am. Try harder than I do. Be what God wants you to be. But you know who she wanted to go to the altar with her when she was ready? But, you know, she was fighting it. And I was on her. Like, we are our children. We try to do the best we can for our children. And I was on her all the time about getting back with God, getting back with God. And she was angry. She was fighting God, but God was dealing with it. But the only one she could take it out on at that time was me. So she did. But then she called me. She's one of my children, and she wants to talk. She'll call me and say, Dad, let's take a drive. She does that. So we took a drive. She said, Dad, you got the keys to the church? I said, yes, I do. She said, let's go. I didn't bit more get the door open than she done hit the hall. God had laid up a hand. She just had to take it. Let's give God a great big hand.